Yeah, so we have followed a group with uh, patients with cluster headache, uh, both episodic cluster headache patients and chronic cluster headache patients for two weeks. And we compared their sleep patterns and how they sleep to, uh, and compared it with the uh, healthy control population. And uh, they also, we followed them with using actigraphy units, like a wristband, a wristwatch band that they carried during these two weeks. And they also responded to a sleep questionnaire. And we could see that the, the cluster patients, they had the, um, uh, so the cluster patients, they didn't have the same good sleep quality as the controls. But we can also see that the ones with chronic cluster headache uh, had an even worse sleep quality. And that's very interesting. We could see that the, the patients, even though when they were in remission, when they don't have their uh, cluster headache attacks, they also showed the uh, decreased sleep quality. Uh, in um, compared to the controls. Uh, well, I can see we, we also actually looked at the cluster headache patients and compared the ones that uh, respond or use triptans to those they don't. And we saw different clinical characteristics. Uh, the ones that uh, don't use the triptans, uh, they had a higher frequency of uh, reporting autonomic symptoms. And they also claimed that the alcohol didn't trigger their attacks as the uh, patient they use uh, the triptans, not the, the, the frequency was lower. And uh, they also smoked less than the patient that used the triptans. So there could be other uh, another pathology lining behind the, the patient that uh, used the triptans compared to the ones that don't use the triptans. Um, 